In a healthy body, when you digest food, saliva helps with the process of mastification, which is represented by water, and enters the esophagus. It is further broken down into glucose molecules by the small intestine, shown here as the two tracks of falling dominoes. The Hot Wheels tracks represent the bloodstream. When glucose moves into the bloodstream, the body detects that its glucose levels are rising and signals to the pancreas to start secreting insulin. Insulin, which is represented here by a magnet, binds to insulin receptors on the cell's surfaces, shown as the paper clips, and ensures that glucose is able to properly enter the cells. However, in the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes, B cells become dysfunctional. When you do not exercise, as you become more obese, insulin resistance increases. And in response to increasing insulin resistance, beta cells have to start working very hard to produce more and more insulin, and the cell's functioning begins to decline. As you can see here, in normal and obese individuals, blood glucose levels stay relatively the same. But in the obese individual, there is some elevation of circulating insulin levels, which is the graph on the right. This occurs because you need more insulin secreted to overcome insulin resistance and to maintain normal blood glucose. There are a few features that we find in most people who are developing type 2 diabetes. First is the concept of decreased first phase insulin secretion. First phase insulin secretion exerts dominant control of glucose levels immediately after a meal is eaten. This loss of acute secretion contributes to glucose intolerance because once your blood sugar starts rising, the consequences of glucose and free fatty acid toxicity begin as well. So what exactly does that mean, the consequences of glucose and free fatty acid toxicity begin? I just call it glucolipotoxicity. The thought is, is that is, it is the combined increased flux of free fatty acids and increased flux of glucose into the beta cell that has detrimental consequences. If you chronically overeat, there are always going to be nutrients going across your beta cell. It's going to have to work really hard. This combined increase of two nutrients, which can only be metabolized in the mitochondria, really causes a change in the selectivity of nutrients once they enter the cell. So if you have a lot of free fatty acid entering the cell, it really inhibits proper glucose utilization in the mitochondria. Additionally, it is thought that these lipids are disposed of in a different way. When fat gets in the beta cells, lipid intermediates are generated that cause abnormal signaling and contribute to the intrinsic dysfunction of the beta cell. This may cause an increase in reactive oxygen species. When you have this competition, it seems that the mitochondria become a little less well coupled. You generate peroxides and other substances which may cause damage. This also can generate nitric oxide and other highly reactive species, which can damage the cell and then lead to this beta cell death. Just around a month ago, on April 15th, the FDA approved a new drug, Tanzium, to treat type 2 diabetes. Tanzium is a glucogen-like peptide 1, a GLP-1 receptor agonist. The drug's safety and effectiveness were evaluated in eight clinical trials involving more than 5,000 patients. It is a drastic improvement from other drugs already on the market because patients participating in the trials showed an improvement in their glycosylated hemoglobin levels, and it is a once-weekly administration only instead of every day. Tanzium contains exenatide, and the amino acid sequence of exenatide partially overlaps that of human GLP-1. Exenatide has been shown to bind and activate the human GLP-1 receptor in vitro. GLP-1 enhanced glucose-dependent insulin secretion by the pancreatic beta cell in the presence of elevated glucose concentrations and also exhibit other anti-hyperglycemic actions following their release into the circulation from the gut. Like I talked about before, the loss of the first phase insulin response is an early beta cell defect in type 2 diabetes. Administration of tanzium at therapeutic plasma concentrations restored first phase insulin response to an IV bolus of glucose. Both first phase insulin secretion and second phase insulin secretion were significantly increased, proving tanzium's effectiveness.